Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natter's My Knitting and Nattering podcast. Uh, for first time viewers, I'm Jennifer. I live in Inverness in Northern Scotland and this is where I come to talk about my knitting. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It makes me feel a bit less silly sitting here just talking to myself. Um, today is the 17th of September. It's been just a little over a week since I recorded again. My two-year-old has decided to take up napping again, but not at a convenient time when I could then have quiet in the house and record my podcast, but mostly when it's time to go get her sister from my six-year-old from school. And so then she doesn't go to sleep at night and hasn't been able to get out here. At night is really kind of the only time I can do this right now, so I apologize for the weird lighting. Um, I keep saying I'm going to go through the garage and look for my little table lamp. I'm getting closer to it. I did. I'm getting closer to it. I will go through the garage at some point. In the meantime, weird lighting, talking at night, really tired and a bit loopy. And this is what it's going to be. I don't have any finished objects to talk about this week, but I do have a few works in progress. I've actually got five knitting bags next to me, which feels like quite a lot. Um, I kind of worried when I did this that I wouldn't have anything to show for it. But then sometimes you sit down with your knitting and you realize you do have something to show for it. The first thing I want to show is my three color cashmere shawl, or cowl rather, that's by Hohi Locatelli, and I started this for her um, Hohi Fall Knit Along, and this is the only one I've entered. The butterfly stitch marker shows where I was. I did not get, oh, you can see where I'm changing colors. Is a little bit of a job, but butterfly stitch marker. You can see I did not make a lot of progress since last we spoke, and that is because I ran out of teal yarn. There it is, no more teal yarn. Halfway around the start of this round, there's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five, six, there's supposed to be nine rows of each color and then one more of the teal which is my my B color um, and I ran out but I had put the call out on the Arnold Colorford the AC knitwear um, Ravelry group because these are my leftovers from one of the Boost Your Knitting projects they said the the uh, Jen's Choice colorways. They've been doing kits for each quarter um, and there's the designer colorways or Jen's colorways. These are Jen's colorways. So I put out a quest and someone came to my rescue and sent me a little ball. This is probably not going to be enough to finish the pattern as it's written, but I do have a very large ball of my color C and so I can just finish with this. It's not going to be the two colors and then just one band, one big chunk of color C. It's going to be color C pretending to be color B probably for the rest. But even if there's just enough to finish this stripe sequence, that is all I really want. So this is the Fiber Spates Scrumptious 4-ply the teal, the ultramarine, and I think this is fuchsia. Um, but yeah, so that's as much as I was able to get done on that, which was not a whole heck of a lot before I ran out of yarn. And this only just showed up today, but I'm so excited to have it. I think it might be a slightly different dye lot because it looks... I can't tell if it looks a different color or if it's just because part of it's been knit up and part of it hasn't. But now that I have that, I will be able to continue working on my three color cashmere shawl, or cowl, I don't know why I keep saying cowl, why I keep saying shawl, it's a cowl. 
And the deadline for that knit along, I believe, is the end of November. So that's a really big, long knit along. There are people who are signed up to knit any number of things. You have to sign up in advance. I know a lot of people signed up a bunch of things and then they'll pick which ones they actually feel like knitting as they finish. Um, but I did not do that. My second one, which is the one that has the most progress in it, is my scrappy, cozy memories kind of blanket. Um, so this is the corner I started at. So yeah, I'm holding it the correct way. When last we spoke, I was in the middle of this blue one. So it's got my stitch marker. These are the stitch markers I got at Perth that I didn't have with me to show you. And they are, I got a whole little set. There's six. Stop turning around. Here, do you want to go this way? <gasps> six wee jammy dodgers. Come here. Come into focus. <gasps> jammy dodgers. And they've even got jam in the middle. Uh, so yeah, with stitch markers and progress keepers and everything, my problem is finding ones that are cute, but not so cute that my children will try to steal them off my knitting while I'm knitting. Um, so yeah, I don't know yet. I only just put it on to come out here and talk to you about where I was. So since then, I added the green, which squared it off, and that I mentioned was Spectrum Fibers, and that was the only mini I had left in my stash before I went to Perth. So all these other ones, um, this is leftover yarn from my Buy It Shawl, so this is Ripples Crafts on the Merino, her Merino 4-ply um, base, and then I'm into the minis I bought at Perth. And then my two-year-old insisted I do um, a green stripey one. This is not a scrap one. This is sock yarn, West Yorkshire spinners, and I think they're lime um, cocktail, whatever the lime-based cocktail drink is. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I did steal five grams to knit a section of my shawl. More minis. This is actually the most recent one I put on because having done those, I switched to this side. And again, these are uh, minis from, this one happens to be Mothy and the Squid. This is left over from the socks I was knitting, my Loch Ness socks. I bought the yarn at the Knit Fest last year from Black Isle Yarns. And this is her No Nylon Sock, um, which is done with a natural dye. And then this is an opal on a sparkle base. This is my first sparkle. And this yarn is a gradient, but then it has weird stripes where it's white with a reddish um, kind of fair isle pattern it's supposed to look like. So I found a spot towards... I recaked it to knit this, and then there had been one of those fair isle white stripe things. So I pulled to just past it and started so I'd have a nice gradient, and I'm very happy with it. And then the blue one. So that, um, this was squared off five by five. And then I've done the first half of my six by six over here. So my blanket is coming along very nicely. And I don't know if I can do this on camera, but it is about from fingertip to well inside my shoulder. Uh, so it is at least part of my wingspan, and that is six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was hoping to make it 19 by 19, and based on the gauge of the squares, the size of the squares for the pattern, that would have been about the same size as I am, a um, little over five and a half feet, so right around five and a half feet but I think this is going to be a little over six feet if I still make it 19 by 19, but who knows, I can stop any point when I've got it at least in a rectangle. Um, both my children have tried to steal this from me. Every time I lay it out to pick another color, 
Catherine, my two-year-old, goes and names all the little colors, which is something she currently likes doing. She sees lots of different colors. She likes to point and name each color, which is very cute when she does it and would not be nearly so cute if I did it. Um, and my six-year-old wants to know if I will knit one from her and she wants to point at colors from this and tell me which ones will be in her blanket. And I'm like, that's not actually how scrappy blankets work. Um, so we will see. At this point, having knit six by five, uh, 30 squares, I'm like, yes, I will knit, I will finish this one and I will knit you one. This is so much fun. I love it. I will keep doing it how I feel about it when I have knit 19 by 19, which is 361, might feel differently, might still be completely enamored and absolutely in love with just making little tiny garter stitch squares. Um, I think this scratches the same itch for just fun, easy, mindless knitting as knitting a hat does. Uh, I have very little need in my life to have a lot of knitted hats, but knitted blankets I could do with. So we'll see. Um, it may turn into something where I just always have one on the needles and then when someone has a baby I whip a little one out. Or it might not. The next project I have to show you is my Vine and Veils shawl. Um, I guess this is my, my top edge. And I've made a little bit of progress on this. I found this was not something I could work on when I am tired, I've got my first swerve, my first chart B, I think, and over here we go to B1, B2. I love the yarn. I love this yarn so much. If someone said, you can only ever knit with this yarn for the rest of your life, I would not particularly put up a fuss. Um, I am not loving knitting a shawl. Uh, I don't, I, I like knitting shawls. I don't like wearing them, but I love this yarn too much to knit a shawl that I'm going to be like, yay, it's beautiful and wear for a week and then put in the cupboard and never touch again or give away. Um, ooh, I've got one that I didn't catch the loop. So I was just waiting until I did this podcast and I could show you what I had done. It is my brioche. That is the technique for this year. Or the This month's Boost Your Knitting technique is brioche. This is not the pattern in the book. Um, that is another pattern by Carol Feller. Carol Feller's yarn. Keller, Carol Feller's pattern. Uh, this is the Vine and Veils shawl. That is the Falling Leaves Scarf. So, here we go. This is the part I'm working on. And frankly, I just love the yarn more than I love the pattern. And I love this yarn so much that whatever I knit with it, I want it to be something that I will love and cherish and have forever, which is not what this project is. Having knit something for myself, I could knit something for someone else but I would not want to do four skeins and a lot of time and effort just to pass it on. That's not something I feel like I can do with that yarn for my first project knit in it. I do have a new cast on, which I actually just started on Friday. Today is not Friday, on Sunday. Um, today is Tuesday. My biggest pumpkin has not had school so far this week. We've had two in-service days. So I'm a little discombobulated as to time and space, frankly. And I have just started this. I worked on it. I picked it out to knit on Saturday and then all I had time was the garter stitch tab. I did change it. Anyway, I'll start with, this is the Narange pattern by Hilary Smith Kelly. Did she pronounce it the French way? Callus. Uh, I probably should have looked into that. And this is on a Ripples Crafts base, her Solven, which is the Yak Merino Silk blend that I knit my um, cardigan I was working on for so long. 
and this is in the Glencansip. Yes, Glencansip in autumn colorway. It has a lot of rich purples and oranges and pinks, and this is about the only autumny colorway that I could have near my face. I have had this caked up for years, intending to make an autumn accessory out of it. And so when I couldn't, when my brioche was in timeout and my blanket was too big to carry with me and my socks are getting close to the point where I need to turn the heels and I needed a new project, I said I will finally knit this. I had picked out a pattern for it and I just needed to grab needles and this is going to be one of the cowls in one of the shawl type cowls. So I've knit to the point where it's going to join. Uh, the next row is where it joins in the round, but I wanted to wait until I could show you, because once it's joined in the round, it won't. I think you won't be able to see the pattern as well, which is this kind of chevrony one. And then it'll have a larger front to the cowl and a smaller back to the cowl. And I know if there's too much in front, kind of bunched up around my neck. I don't like those as much. So instead of doing a small garter stitch tab cast on, I did it to a slightly larger measurement. Um, so I will have a few, I mean, I probably could have done more, but I will have a slightly less bulk in front. This is my first time trying it. It's not quite even. And I think with the smaller one, you don't wind up seeing how uneven it is. But I don't know. We'll see what it's like when it blocks. And if I like that, then doing these kind in the future, that's what I'll do is I'll just basically, you know, cast on to be knitting um, fewer rounds before it joins in the round. Cast on more stitches, have less before it joins in the round that I have less bulk here um, but yeah so that's the one I have just started over the weekend yeah I guess I started it Sunday and I worked on it a bit yesterday was what I did with that and then when I got home from having been out on Sunday when I needed knitting to take with me I realized that I could not find my Anna Mockery uh, my bright pink socks that I've been working on. So I'm hoping that I left it at the where, where my two-year-old Catherine has gymnastics. I'm hoping I just left it there and the people who work in the cafe there, they all know that I'm the one who knits and hopefully they would have just set it aside for me and it'll be there and it's not mysteriously somewhere. I mean, we could have dropped it at the park or any number of things. Um, big long walk from gymnastics to home I could have dropped it and I hope not because both socks were in the bag because uh, I was getting closer to the heel turn so I have them both together normally if I finish a sock I set it aside and then I don't have them together but with the podcast and stuff I was keeping them together I was getting close to the heel turn so if I do lose that bag not only do I lose one of the bags that I made over the summer, but I lose all the yarn. <laughs> I don't even have a square yet in my scrap blanket. I did think about pulling from the outside of the ball and knitting only square. Haven't done that. So I would be out the knitting needles and those are my Chiagu interchangeable um, sock tips, one of those. And the in the size, of course, that I use the most, the ones I use for knit, for socks, the 2.0s. Anyway, hopefully next time I talk to you, I will start with, I found my knitting. And I have a second new, anyway, yeah, I discovered I, I misplaced that, so. Very upset about that right now. Meanwhile, last week I had another new cast on shortly after the podcast. And this is a test knit for Hunter Hammerson. This is in the ret 
Retreat, I think it's called. Um, yeah, West Yorkshire Spinners Retreat. It's a single ply blue faced carry hill. Um, it is 100% reared, sheared, and spun in Britain. And this is a cabled brioche that'll be all swirly and come together. And I am not loving knitting it. Brioche is fine. I'm not hugely fond of the yarn. I think if I particularly looked at it and saw that it was a single ply, I would have picked something else because I have knit with um, Rowan has, I think it's their Creative Worsted is a single ply and I've knit with that and I did not love it. And I'm not particularly loving this. This is soft. Um, I mean, it's not merino and I don't know how itchy it'll be as a gift knit, but I haven't quite gotten to the point where I can pretend to try it on yet. Um, but I was knitting on it and my hands were hurting. So I set it aside and that's when I picked up my blanket again for the week. Uh, and then I was thinking maybe my hands were hurting, like my wrists were hurting because Catherine's pram is slightly broken. The telescoping handle, the latches on the side that keep it telescope, you know, from going up and down have just worn out. Uh, they did it, it's happened with my first child when she was my, um, the tulip, when she was around the same age, they, it just stopped the little plastic bits that keep the thing from sliding up and down, wear out and no longer keep it from sliding up and down. Um, so with my first child, I wound up using masking tape and taping the handles so they wouldn't slide up and down because I thought it was going to be this whole bigger deal. It's a very expensive pram and I thought I'd have to send it to, now I'm trying to think what Scandinavian country it's made in, um, like send it back and have it like, fixed and sent and it would be this whole big ordeal and very expensive. And it turns out it was an eight pound part that you could order off a website and five minutes to change it out. So this time I knew to order it and it just arrived today. So I'll change that out tomorrow, but because the handles were going up and down, like I could push it, but it had to be all the way down, which meant I was leaning forward and holding the handles was kind of at a, a weird angle on my wrists. So I thought that was part of the problem and I just put this in timeout for a little bit. And then this weekend, we haven't gone anywhere using the pram. So I thought, okay, I'll pick it up and I will try it again. And I knit past one cable row, which the first couple of cable rows was only the one swirly, but now I've got two swirlies. So it's basically knit a couple brioche stitches and then I think it's two brioche, two plain brioches, and then a cable brioche and then two plain brioches at this point. And my wrist, my hands are hurting again, so. The pattern's fine, it's not the pattern's fault. It's, my hands hurt very easily. Um, I've got wrist problems and I think I'm probably getting arthritis in my fingers. Um, anyway, I think I can work on this, but I think I can only do one cable row and then it's, you know, it's kind of one, one row is the cable row and then there's three rows that aren't. So I could do two rows with the red and two rows with the black a day. Or, you know, do that and then a couple hours later maybe do another couple. I don't know. I'm not giving up on this. I'm not frogging it. I am just going to take it very slowly. Uh, and that is a test knit, so I am sad that I'm doing it very slowly, but I have printed out the pattern so I can read it very closely and say if there's anything that I notice in the written pattern, because I'm not, I'm probably not going to have this done before the official pattern comes out for sale to everyone. Speaking of which, if you remember my little elfling that I knit and the little leaf pod, for it to live in. That was another test knit for Hunter Hammerson and that one has come out 
just today. So if you look on um, probably the Ravelry group, I know it's on Instagram and Twitter, and if you're on her mailing list, the mailing list has the highest discount, but the others have, I think it's a 10% discount, but they're very cute, and the instructions are amazing, as they always are. And yeah, so that one came out, and if you saw them and thought they were cute, and you want to see there's three other style capes and another type of leaf, please go look at them, because they really are very cute. And yeah, so that was my three works in progress, my two new casts on, and acquisitions. I bought a wee knitting bag. Um, it has a little button and a little mushroom. And this is just a sack sized yarn. It's got a double goss grain ribbon pull tie. It's got a wee handle. Handles are kind of my thing. I'm sorry, there's a tin of stitch markers in the bottom here. And it also came with a set of, here we go, let me just make sure there's not a next order discount. Um, I'll take this out of the bag. This is So Beautiful by Nicola. And here's her card. Do, 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 do. And she has an Etsy shop. Is that focusing? I can't tell. Uh, so Beautiful by Nicola. The bag also came with two little stitch markers, or progress keepers. There's a tiny little star and a slightly larger butterfly. Uh, so Beautiful by Nicola. It's a very nice bag. It's lined with a quilt batting. I should probably take the tin of stitch markers out. Uh, but yeah. Very nice. It's a really good size. The ribbons pull very nicely. Counting this one on the bag, there are three stitch markers with it. And I th think I only paid like eight pounds for it. Um, it might have been ten pounds. It was a reduced bag, though the ones she has at full price are not, <laughs> they're not expensive. They're still, it's really well made. Speak last week I said the other um, the Lay Family Yarns bags were not being charged nearly enough for them. I think this is going to be in the same camp where they are not sufficiently valued. They are very cheap. So if you want a really cheap, really nice bag, go check now. Because I am honestly going to send her an email and say you should be charging more for these. Your time is valuable enough. These bags are good enough that you can charge more. Um, because people should be able, I mean, even if you can't make a living, you should be able to make a proper return on the work you do. Uh, yeah, and my other acquisition, I don't have anything, well, I got a part for the pram, but I have ordered a bunch more minis because I am completely addicted to knitting my blanket. And my blanket, right now, the ones I have to add are all fairly bright. Um, when I started, these ones are more muted, and now they're all brighter. Um, so I'm trying to order some more muted ones, some more purples. I had my six-year-old decide with me what color to do for you know the blank that was here, and we eventually picked the blue. But I was um, my two-year-old wanted me to do a green. And my six-year-old counted and decided I had seven greens, but I only had four blues. And I don't think she's counting quite the way I would count the colors. But I had lots of more greens than blues, and she wanted me to do a blue. So we did that blue. She originally wanted an orange, but didn't like any of the oranges I was showing her. She says, you only have one orange, which I think she was counting that one, that one's an orange, and that one's an orange, and this one's got a fair bit of orange in it. Also orange, not my favorite color, but one of the mini packs that I got at Perth does have a fair number of oranges. That's where 
this one came from and this is the brightest orange I've actually set a couple of them aside the more kind of brownie oranges I may I put them in the ball the bowl with the balls where when I've knit and I still have enough to knit another one I've put them in a bowl and then I can decide later if I want to use to repeat the colors or trade them for other colors or Christina now wants me to use them to knit her blanket so we'll see how that goes but I put some of the minis I didn't ball them up I just set the twisted skeins in the bowl so I may decide to work some in later or I may just use them for trading because they're not really my colors and I don't mind a few oranges especially like this orange is very pretty um, I'm somewhat less fond of this orange, but having one of those isn't really a big deal. I mean, at the time it was kind of my only orange. There was the lemons and oranges, which is this one. Um, orange. Part of it is because I am at the beginning. I want to work in various things that I might want in the end. So it's not like, do 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 do. oh, now I just need lots of yarn. And suddenly there are things that are not like spread equally throughout the quilt. So I did order more minis online, and when they show up, I will tell you more about those. Um, but I'm very excited. I am so completely bit by the minis bug. Uh, I was like, no, don't order more minis. You'll get some when you go to the Loch Ness Knit Festival in October. And now I'm thinking, the way at the rate I'm knitting this, I may have gone through all of my new minis and not quite be ready to start with my repeat colors yet before I get to Loch Ness Miss Festival. So I probably do, haha, I'm justifying it. I probably do need some more minis, but we'll see. Um, in other news, gardening, I actually did some gardening. When we were out on Sunday, I bought a plum tree and I had bought a plum tree for my birthday a year ago. Uh, not this past May, but the May before and it was just a little bare root one um i guess it wasn't a bare root one but it was just little this little tiny tree and we planted it and last summer was really really hot and we watered it all the time and after the the winter it had like two flowers and some leaves and then some of the like half of the tree, the branches didn't have any leaves, which I think was because my six-year-old used it to hang her blanket up, or not her blanket, sorry, her, we'd been playing outside and she took her cardigan off and threw it over the tree. And then the leaves fell off of those branches and they never grew any back. And then the gardener accidentally strimmed the tree and that was kind of the end of it. It, it wasn't even the whole bit around, but it was clearly enough, it was just like part of the tree, but it was such a little tree. It never recovered, it slowly died. So autumn is the best time, I'm told, to plant things like trees. So when we were out, we went past a garden place and I went in to see if they had any plum trees and they did. So I got home and that afternoon I dug a big hole and I took out the dead tree though I put it in a pot for because when I said I was going to replace it my six-year-old cried she was like no don't kill the tree it's pretty dead but anyway I put it in a pot so if it feels like getting better for next spring it has a fighting chance um, I mean I basically put it in the pot that I took the new tree out of the new tree is twice as big as my little tree was. It has lots of branches and lots of leaves and it can have the rest of the autumn um, until it feels like dropping its leaves. Hopefully we'll have a nice mild autumn. Um, it's only September right now so it should have September and October. So it should have maybe a month and a half and I've watered it every day. Big lots of water cleared a big circle around it so when it does rain it'll go straight in we did plant some bulbs in the dirt so in the spring we'll have some flowers there but yeah hopefully fingers crossed i'm doing everything right this time and this tree will live because i would really really i mean 
plums would be nice. It's a Victoria plum. I'm a dwarf Victoria plum, so it shouldn't get too big. But I want a tree in front of my windows to be a privacy screen. Um, I've got big picture windows in the front of the house looking out on the street. And like when I'm sat at my dining room table eating my breakfast, the neighbors come out and get in their chair and wave to me. And the dining room table isn't in front of the windows, it's the lounge. And then, you know, windows, lounge, dining room's over here, but it's all one big room. They're waving at me while I'm at the far end of the house because there's these two windows. Uh, I grew up in the woods where my neighbors were all trees and all you could see were trees. And I did have, there were other houses, but you could see that much of someone's roof on the road below us if they could see anything of our house, it was the underside of the wraparound porch. Like, I am not used to the idea that people on the street should be able to see into my house. It, it does not make me very happy. Um, so yeah, I'm planting a tree. So that way we can have the curtains open because we do need the sunlight, otherwise it's really dark. Um, but yeah, plum tree, and hopefully we'll have plums. But a plum tree to be a bit of a privacy screen. Uh, yeah, so gardening, I planted a tree and we did, I bought a bunch of bulbs over two visits and we planted all but one bag. I still have one bag of tulips. Um, Tulip, my six-year-old, that's not her real name, that's the nickname she has picked for herself, is very into tulips right now. So we do have a fair number in the garden. I'm not doing any digging them up and repotting them, so... There's probably a rate of attrition where some of them aren't making it, but I will just keep throwing tulips in the ground until some of them keep popping up. Um, if that absolutely doesn't work, then I will put them in, like, you know, big tubs that I will move into the garage over the winter and then move back outside in the spring. I don't know. If they're in the tubs, I suppose I could dig them up as well. I don't want to dig them up. The only thing I'm willing to dig up is potatoes because then you get to eat them. But yeah, lots of bulbs and I finally planted the pansies which I bought like probably a month ago and they've still been in their little trays that I bought them in. But I put those on top. Um, I put bulbs and lots of the planters and a few in the ground and I topped up the planters. Like there was one that was empty and so I put some dirt in, put the big bulbs in put two inches of dirt in, we put the little bulbs in, put another two inches of dirt in, put the pansies on top, topped up the dirt to be level with the pansies so that it'll all settle a bit. Because um, otherwise my two-year-old and my six-year-old want to put the bulbs in the ground and they're like, look, I put it half an inch down. And I'm like, that's, that's, no, that's not, gonna do a little deeper. So hopefully come the spring, we'll have lots of beautiful flowers by the spring you really need them around here. Um, and then I closed my little book while I was talking about that. Family! The biggest news, the best news, is that the cousins have finally arrived and this is my BFF from when we were 11 um, in middle school and her family have moved to Scotland. They came to visit and part of their world tour to find some place that isn't the, Cal the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, um, Silicon Valley. Excuse me. They came to visit last spring and they fell in love with Inverness, which is very easy to do. Everyone who's ever come to visit us here in Inverness has started looking at housing prices um, and then they look at jobs and the jobs tends to be the thing. But... Uh, the cousin's daddy works from home anyway, so he can work anywhere in the world. And they were able to get an exceptional talent visa. They move here, they bought a house, which I went and picked the keys up the other week. So when they showed up, I was waiting at their house to open the door for them. And I had made up, I'd given them, we'd given them things we're not using. Like we'd loaned them some folding chairs and, uh, the bed that had been in Tulip's room until she got a lofted bed, so it was in the garage. We loaned them the bed and we set up an air mattress and uh, Catherine was with me. Tulip was at Girl Brigades and Catherine was there and she enjoyed running around and our light switches are all pretty high up on the wall. 
their light switches are at a level that a two-year-old can reach them. So she basically, like I'm in the room unpacking dishes and she's turning the lights off. So we did loan them our spare set of dishes and our spare set of cutlery from back when we used to entertain and have friends over and you would need extra dishes more than just one family goes through in an average day. Um, so yeah, I set some stuff up while waiting for them and they came and we all had big hugs and they've got three kids, two of whom are old enough that they showed me where which room would be theirs and told me about how they were going to try to decorate them and then we got a taxi and we came home. Tulip still hasn't seen their house and she's a bit sad about that. but. We will be invited over when they're a little more settled in. And then they came over here on Saturday, the five of them. And then the two older kids stayed the night. They've got a nine year old and an 11 year old. So they stayed the night and the baby and the mom and dad went back to their house. And that was really nice. Um, although Tulip abandoned the room where uh, I guess she had decided to sleep on the floor with the nine-year-old and then when she didn't like that rather than move back into her own bed which was right there she came and slept with me um, and I set the 11 year old up in the sofa bedroom because I figured that was a more comfortable sleeping experience than being in the room with the littler kids um, yeah the 11 year old from what I understand is going through a lot of I'm too old to play with babies, but not really quite old enough to hang out with the adults so much. So that's a very awkward stage. So treat like an adult as much as you can is kind of going to be my philosophy. Um, we'll see how well I stick up with that. We don't, we don't really know each other that well, the kids and us. Um, but we will get to. And now my kids have cousins because neither they nor we have any family, so we're all ready to be yay cousins. Um, and then on the Sunday we went to Play Zone, which is a soft indoor play, you know, climbing structure, ball pits thing. Um, and the mom and the baby joined us. There was lots of running around and fun, and some squabbling in the big kids. My kids, surprisingly, were very well behaved, so yay my kids. All credit to them, no credit to my parenting. They behave well because they are, they're good kids. Um, and we also went mattress shopping yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Uh, and again, that was the mom and the three kids and then me and my two kids. And they bought a couple new beds and I bought a new bed for my room. My bed is 10 years old and the mattress is completely shot and I've decided to downsize slightly so there'll be more room in the room. Right now it's pretty much all bed and we do not need a bed that is as big as the one we currently have. So slightly downsizing bed and yeah, I'm getting a new mattress. Um, Tulip liked the part where I asked her to sit on like I was trying out mattresses so I lay down on them and like come over here and wiggle on the bed so I can see how much it makes the rest of the bed jiggle. Um, she's like can we go back and do that more? I'm like you didn't even want to be there but she liked she liked sitting on the beds and wiggling to see if she could jiggle me on the same bed. Um, but yeah I hear my husband. I'm pretty much done. Uh, other news, Tulip lost her first bottom two teeth. One of them had been wibbly since Easter and was really, really loose. And then two days later, the other one fell out. Um, the tooth fairy gave her two pounds for each tooth, which is probably a lot, but honestly, you can't buy anything with 50 pounds, or 50 pounds, 50 pence. And Oliver's eye is looking much better. He got switched to a steroid eye drop. We took him to the vet on Monday and then the vet emailed a picture to an eye specialist and they've agreed that the ulcer is all healed. So he got a steroid eye drops and his eyes are improving immensely now that, that he's got that. And 
I already mentioned that Catherine, my two-year-old, has started napping again at inconvenient times and staying up late. So that's pretty much everything. So yeah, thank you for joining me. Thank you for sticking with me. And hopefully next week I have more coherent knitting news and I have found my socks again. Thank you so much for joining me. Good night.